In this video, we'll look at the basics of audio recording, and along the way, we'll apply what we've learned in the first two videos. For right now, the song is just a piano part and a vocal. Open the File menu and select New Project. Let's use the Project Assistant to select a template that'll help us get going quickly. Click on the Recording tab, and here you'll find several pre-configured templates. The small text under the title suggests how you might use them. Let's use this template. Now we'll also select Prompt for Project Location at the bottom of the Project Assistant. To keep things simple, let's create a new project folder on the desktop. I'm going to give the project folder the same name as the song, which is More. Then click Open. Here's our project window. Let's enlarge it. You can see that the template contains several tracks that have already been named for the intended parts. If you look closely, you'll notice that the icons in some tracks for FX state and EQ state are illuminated. What this tells you is that there are already effects and EQ settings active on that channel. Sometimes you'll see another track labeled Effects Channels, and this icon tells you that it's a folder track. If you click the folder icon, it opens to show what's inside. In this case, the folder track contains Effects Channels, and what we have here is a basic reverb effect. We'll discuss how to use effects in the last video. The next thing we need to do is connect each track to the appropriate input on our interface. You do this in the first Inspector tab. This icon displays the input routing. Since the microphone for the piano happens to be connected to input number 2 on my interface, we'll connect track 1 to input number 2. And the microphone for the singer is connected to input number 1, so let's connect track 2 to input 1. The output should automatically connect to our only output bus, which is labeled here as Stereo Out. Now in order to hear or monitor the input signal, you have to turn on the input monitor function for each track. You do that by clicking the small speaker icon. To hear the track playback, you'll have to turn this off again. In order to record the input signal, we have to arm each track. You do that by clicking the Record Enable button. The button turns red when it's active. OK, the tracks are now armed. We need one more device called a mixer to help us set up the recording levels. Open the Device menu and select Mix Console. And we'll go over this console in more detail in the final chapter, but here are the basics. With all the panes in view, you can think of the Mix Console in four basic areas. At the top are universal controls, which include things like the Window Layout tool, Channel and Rack Visibility, which we'll talk about shortly, and the Transport controls. Then you have global controls for things like muting and soloing tracks, and Automation. There are also global controls for bypassing all of the inserts or all of the EQ channel strip and send effects with one click. And all the way to the right is where you can access the Functions menu. The center area, called the Rack, can be configured to show a variety of information that we'll look at in the last video. Then you have a Visibility tab to the left. And of course, at the bottom are the Faders and Channel Controls. The Mix Console is fully scalable. You can grab the sizing handle in the corner and drag it to the size you want and all the panes inside will automatically adjust. Then within the Mix Console, you can click and drag the edges of any pane to adjust it. Remember that you can use the Window Layout tool to disable any panes that you're not using. Let's turn off the unneeded panes for now. You can use the Visibility tab to select which channels you want to see. The radio buttons turn each track's visibility on and off. And if you select a group of channels, you can turn their visibility on and off together. Another neat trick is that if you hold down the Shift key and click on a channel, everything else turns off. And just one thing to keep in mind, all we're doing with this is adjusting which channels you can see. 
changing the visibility won't affect the information in the channel and it won't mute the channel's playback. In other words, hidden channels still play back normally. Now I'll turn everything back on and let's take a look at one more helpful feature, the Channel Types menu. Here, you can choose which family of channels to show or hide. For example, during mixdown, you may not need to see the input channels. Or if you're overdubbing a vocal part, it might be convenient to hide all the instrument channels. And this menu lets you turn all of the channels of a certain type on or off with one click. Since the input monitor is active, we can see the input signal level here. The default position for the faders is zero. Any signal that goes above the zero level on the meter will overload the system and cause distortion, a condition known as clipping. If that happens, you'll see a red light appear. Clipping must be avoided during recording. It cannot be fixed later. To stay on the safe side, let's try to keep our recording level somewhere between minus three and minus six. Now our performer is already wearing headphones, which are connected directly to the MR816. One last thing. Let's give our performer a metronome to help keep the timing consistent. This will allow us to use MIDI drums and other automatic functions with greater ease. The metronome is also known as a click track. You can turn it on and off by pressing the C key on your computer's keyboard. And you can adjust the sound and volume of the metronome using the metronome setup dialog. Okay, let's try a take. I never saw it coming. What went down last night? These things happen to other people. I never thought. Okay, to hear playback, we need to disable the input monitor by deselecting the yellow speaker icon. Let's return the project cursor to the beginning of the project and press play. I never saw it coming. And one thing to consider, since we recorded the voice and the piano at the same time, the two sounds are mixed together on the different tracks, so you can't completely separate them. Another approach to recording is to record the piano in one pass and then overdub the vocal in a second pass. If your performer's okay with this way of doing things, it'll give you complete isolation on each part and therefore complete control after the recording process. So let's record the piano. Now we'll turn off the input monitor so that the performer can hear and sing along with the first track. Now we'll record the vocal. Okay, now we can control the piano and voice in complete isolation from each other. I never... What went down last night? This allows us to make edits to one track without affecting the other, like this. Zoom and scroll until you see the part that you want to edit. You can turn off the snap function here to allow for more flexibility in where you place the cursor. Take the scissor tool and click each place that you want to cut. Then you can use the eraser tool or the delete key to remove the unwanted portions. Last night. Now these are very simple editing techniques compared to what Cubase is capable of. Okay, let's move on to the next video and we'll see how to use MIDI and some VST instruments to add even more parts to these first tracks.